This is Steve. And this is Sean. Welcome to Acromedia's High Five. So, Steve, what are we going to talk about? We're going to be talking about that thing right in front of you. How unexpected. How unexpected. That is the point of sale, or the kiosk of the point of sale, running on a Raspberry Pi setup, a little do-it-yourself setup here. Mm -hmm. And this is also our first hardware episode we're going to be doing. This is our first ever hardware episode. Oh. Yep. Today marks the day. Now we're just like one of those classic YouTube channels that reviews <laughs> hardware, does unboxings and yes. stuff. We should have done an unboxing, yes. right? But. Uh, uh, how we built it, like, and then do like a time lapse of us actually putting yeah. this together and configuring um, it. That's it. We are going to do uh, how we built it, um, not a mm -hmm. high five, but we're going to do a couple of tutorial episodes of how we built it, and we're going to demo, you know, more specifically the point of sale running on some different types of hardware and sure. stuff like that. So um, those will be sort of follow. -up. They'll probably be longer, 10, 20 minute tutorial videos. So let's just go mm -hmm. over a bit of a, a recap so far. So um, by now, if you've been watching our series or follow anything that Acromedia does um, with Drupal.org you would know that we have a point of sale and we have on, on our YouTube uh, channel, we have a lot of different how-tos, how to use Drupal Commerce, how to use the point of sale. But today, as we mentioned earlier, we're specifically going over the hardware uh, that's actually running the point of sale on it. Mm -hmm. um, so even before we get to the hardware, do know that you can still run the point of sale you know, on an iPad, mobile, computer, because you are just going to a web address. But mm -hmm. yeah, if you can get a browser yeah. on it, you can run the point of sale on it pretty much. That so. being said, because you made a good point to me earlier, is well, what happens if you want a bigger screen? What happens if you want to run it different? If you want to have handhelds for people in the store? Mm -hmm. All those things. Yeah. Always having like. an $800 iPad, which most of the functionality you don't use, mm -hmm. is not necessarily good. And plus it also requires sort of, you have to set things up in kiosk mode. You have to worry about, you know, iOS updates and things like that. It's not necessarily uh, conductive to, you know, a cashier setup or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we had lots of people, we would demo it on like a laptop or something, and it was hard to make the sort of leap between like, okay, I understand it on the laptop, but like obviously I'm not gonna have laptops in all my yeah, stores sure. or whatever, yeah. right? Like, you're you know, not making that brain connection. And, you're like, well, I like, see it on a laptop. You're just like, well, yeah, it's just yeah, demoing. Does it need a laptop or whatever? <laughs> and you're like, well, no, it can just be anything, but okay, anything, what is anything? So we thought, okay, well, let's make some examples or whatever, and this this sort of being our first one, and this is a pretty simple setup um, with Raspberry Pi um, and just a touch screen uh, mm -hmm. that's hooked up, so it's it's pretty low hardware. This is about 250 bucks Canadian for the whole setup, I think. Um, and it runs point of sale totally fine, and it will automatically boot up into the point of sale, so you just have to plug it in, connect it to the internet, and it's gonna come right up to your point of sale login. Sure. And you set it up. So it's meant to be sort of dummy proof. So like if your staff has a problem, it's basically unplug it, plug it back in. Like, you Perfect. know, it's not like go into the settings and try to do this. And yeah, it's like, just going to reboot the that, kiosk. That's what you need to explain to like your, your staff member who's, you know, just supposed to run the till and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you need to be like, do this setting and then do that. It's like, no, just turn it off and back on again. Um, so you did mention that we are going to be doing an episode. I know it won't be our episode, yep. but there will be one to go mm -hmm. over exactly how we built it. But mm -hmm. because we don't have to have that yet, do you want to do like the 30 second version of like what you did? How yeah, you we'll do it? a very small one. It won't show sure. you all how to build it, but I'll explain a little bit what the hardware is. It's basically made of two setups. It's this touch screen uh, here, which you can see at the front. And then it is a Raspberry Pi just mounted on the back. As you can see, it is very um, open DIY-ish yep. to sort of show everything that's happening. Obviously, you could put it in a different yeah. enclosure. Rudimentary on could, purpose to kind of show Yeah, you know, this how. is the absolute sort of basics, and it will be good for our demoing of showing how to build together. You can buy a different enclosure, you know, people 3D print stuff or whatever. There's tons and tons of different screen options. This is just a screen that's connected via HDMI, so it can be, you know, anything. You could, you know, we'll probably do one later with like a big 17-inch display or something like that that mm. could make much more of a kiosk view. Um, but we wanted to show something just very simple. So it's basically that we bought a Raspberry Pi starter kit, which comes with a Pi and just a, a memory card and a few other things, USB charging cable and stuff. Um, and then this display. Um, just bought it off of Newegg, it was really simple. So we'll post even like what hardware we got, um, where we bought it from, that kind of thing. And then we'll probably do in the future a few more um, setups that are different than this. We'll, we'll do one probably with a battery pack. We'll do some nice. other things and, and kind of go from there, especially if they turn out to people actually be interested in them. So, so the point of sale, mm -hmm. as we know, especially once you getting, get the hardware working for it, um, mm -hmm. you have both the administrative view in which you're actually putting in the order, but mm -hmm. you can also have a display for the customer to see, which is a different view, just showing their items being run in. Run in. How yeah, does that oh, we, we can actually different? even almost do sort of three different views. Um, so this view right now is to be as if a cashier was running this, yeah. right? So this is to log into the system and then they would work on the back end 
and stuff. Um, you could switch it so you could have it doing a customer display view, mm -hmm. which is, um, you might have uh, some places like Walmart and stuff do it. It basically mm -hmm. shows what's being rung in to when you're purchasing. So you can mm -hmm. see that, oh, that is what I wanted to buy and that's the price. It got discounted correctly and that kind of stuff or whatever, right? Um, so that can be a, a customer facing one as well. Again, all you need is a browser. Um, so anything that can display a browser and you can plug it into even a TV or something. That one's even easier because it usually doesn't need to be touch screen. Mm -hmm. So it can just be a monitor, a TV. It can cost 75 bucks or whatever and be super cheap and still be big. Mm -hmm. um, and you plug it in and it just it just chugs away all day, just automatically syncing um, with the screen, uh, which is cool. And then the third option is you can actually just run this in more like a kiosk mode, which is basically running the front end of the website, um, just sort of nice for mobile and maybe you would do some custom settings. And so that's one where you would set that out, you know, in your store or something like that and be like, hey, people can browse products, maybe they can even buy things. Um, we probably will in the future do a setup where we actually integrate with like a, a receipt printer and stuff mm -hmm. to do more of a, a full sort of self-serve kiosk, you know, like yeah. a you know, buying movie tickets or something like that. Um, that's probably gonna be a little bit down the road as we, you know, get work our way towards that basically yeah. we're not saying that you mm -hmm. can't currently hook it up to a print and all those things that you're just talking about the self-serve yeah i mean you can already hook it up to that and i mean even this one you could just plug a printer in and stuff mm -hmm. like that but you know it's it wouldn't be very tamper proof and stuff yeah, like that if you sure. just have everything free wires you'd have to you want to make an enclosure and sort of have it a little more dummy proof if you're yeah. making a terminal there's there's sort of extra um requirements uh, needed there whatever we actually have a little bit of experience with uh doing bitcoin atms as well which mm -hmm. which will probably come in helpful so yeah an odd thing that we have um in our yeah <laughs> a weird sort of random thing oh yeah, yeah. and also atm stuff or yeah. whatever we didn't do too much of the hardware but we worked with software for them yeah. a lot and we're, we're aware of what the hardware setups and i'm well aware of that project. And, and there's a couple of people uh um, who work in the commerce space who I actually talked to at DrupalCon um, that do a lot of sort of maker DIY hardware stuff that um, are going to give us a little bit of a hand on that as well. So. And, and regarding uh, this hardware, he would be sad if we didn't mention his name. Tyler oh, Marshall. Yes. Uh, oh. Tyler Marshall, uh, you know, senior uh, hardware engineer at Acro. Um, <laughs> ignore that this is the only hardware <laughs> we've ever made so far. Um, set this all up. Um, uh, he uh, ordered all the parts. He did the design and put it all together and everything. So, um, Tyler, yes. don't have your feelings hurt now. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to mention about uh, the hardware before we get into uh, that episode where we really go into detail? Uh, I mean, I think that's good for the basics. It's just that it's a lot cheaper and it gives you freedom to do whatever you want. And we will post, you know, how to do absolutely everything. You know, we have no intention necessarily of like selling you expensive hardware kits. It's like it's Drupal. It's open source. It's DIY yeah. kind of stuff. That's so actually a, we'll a, cool, a cool point to make. It's mm -hmm. it's it's on Drupal. Everything you see here um, in terms of the software is free, and you can even see how we pretty much took a shoestring budget to, to make this work. You know, we're essentially talking about a working point of sale that could be used in a store right now for what you said, two hundred fifty bucks Canadian. Yeah. So like aside from looking a little silly, US. this is this is perfectly fine, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't have a back on it and stuff, but honestly, mm -hmm. you're talking like thirty bucks to put it in a case or something like yeah. that, right? Um, so that one time where you had, you know, that little like square kiosk and you're like, oh, that's not very much overhead. This is less. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to pay square And it can be anything. whatever you want and it's not one of four choices <laughs> or something like that. That's right. right. So. Mm -hmm. so go ahead. If you like to comment or subscribe, please do so. Also check out our blog on acromedia.com. Uh, follow me on Twitter. And oh, there's one other thing we have to do. Um, check What's out that? our Facebook. That's it. Oh, we have to check yeah. out Facebook. Mm-hmm.